Thank you, Chairwoman Eshu. And this is obviously a very important hearing, and it's really great to see our new secretary, who is one of our colleagues and a former member of the Democratic leadership, Javier Becerra. Great to see you, Javier. Um, at last year's hearing with the Trump administration, Democrats highlighted the implications of massive cuts that were being proposed to vital health programs while simultaneously hearing federal witnesses attest to the terrifying potential of the then new virus known as COVID-19. The Biden administration's fiscal year 22 budget request is comparatively a breath of fresh air, and we can now bolster our nation's public health agencies by acting on this request. I heard Mr. Guthrie express concern about the increases, but I believe given the pandemic, I think these increases are absolutely necessary. Overall, the request includes $131.7 billion for HHS and its adjoining agencies, a 23.5 increase from the 2021 enacted level. This includes critical investments to improve our nation's public health preparedness, such as $905 million for the strategic national stockpile and $8.7 billion for capacity improvements and public health threat detection and assistance at the Centers for Disease Control. If enacted, this would be the largest budgetary increase for CDC in nearly 20 years. The request also includes funding for vital safety net programs and for addressing health inequities in COVID-19 and beyond. It increases funding for CDC's social determinants of health program. It aims to reduce maternal mortality and morbidity through strengthening maternal mortality review committees and provides a funding increase to the Indian Health Service, very important to many of our members on this committee. It also provides an 18% budget increase for the Title X Family Planning Program, and this program has historically served, served over 4 million low-income people a year by providing critical screenings and health services. Now, the Biden administration's budget request would also expand cross-agency research capabilities to combat life-threatening diseases. Through the National Institutes of Health, it would establish the Advanced Research Projects Agency Health, or ARPA, a research agency that would initially focus on diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer. I look forward to learning more about how the proposed agency's activities may build off NIH's existing research to fight life-saving cures. I know the president talked about this in his address to Mr. Secretary. And lastly, the budget request also makes significant investments in improving mental health and combating the opioid epidemic. It would provide a $1.6 billion uh, to the Community Mental Health Services Block Grant and $10.7 billion to fight the opioid crisis, which has been exacerbated, as we know we've had hearings on this, Madam Chair, by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, these investments are bold and necessary, but we can't stop there. The COVID-19 pandemic laid bare the impacts chronic underfunding of public health has had on our surveillance, preparedness, and response efforts. And it's my hope to work with the Biden administration to ensure rebuilding our public health infrastructure is a key component of any jobs and infrastructure plan. And we also have to take action to lower the cost of prescription drugs. The president mentioned it in his address by passing HR3, the Elijah Cummings Lower Drug Cost Now Act. And we have to make permanent the enhanced premium tax credits that we enacted into law on a temporary basis in the American Rescue Plan. The administration recently announced that nearly a million Americans signed up for health coverage during the special enrollment period, and the enhanced subsidies are reducing monthly premiums by over 40%. Thank you again, uh, Secretary Becerra, for really pushing that special enrollment period. I know how important it is to you. We also have to ensure that low-income Americans have access to quality, affordable coverage, and now is the time to finish the work we began over a decade ago with the Affordable Care Act. Now, I just wanted to, I just wanted to say this. Um, I heard Mr. Guthrie mention ORR and the southern border and the unaccompanied children. You know, I have to be uh, critical, Mr. Guthrie, because you somehow suggested that, you know, uh, that, that the Trump administration played a positive role in this. Maybe that's not what you meant, but it sounded that way. And I have to say, after having gone through four years uh, with the Trump administration, which forcibly separated children from their families, caused terrible damage to not only the children, but to the ORR program itself, I cannot see anything positive that came out of that. Uh, you know, during the time that they were in charge, the Republicans on this committee refused to even hold a single hearing to examine what was happening and hold the Trump administration accountable for, that, for their outrageous actions. So, you know, the Biden administration was left with this decimated system, but they're working hard to process those children humanely. And, and thanks to you, I know we are going to hold a hearing within the next month 
in our oversight and investigation subcommittee where the head of the ORR will testify and will examine how the ORR program is functioning. I like to be bipartisan, but I can't excuse the Trump behavior on this. And I think that Biden administration is doing their best to deal with what, what was left uh, uh, in a terrible situation. Thank you, Madam Chair.